Leighton, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Good, good. Uh, as, as good as you can be in quarantine, but um, <laughs> keeping my spirits high. Excellent, excellent. So really excited to have you on the show. Um, want to hear first before we dive into the specifics of what you're working on is how did you find the DeFi movement? What brought you here? Yeah, so um, the DeFi movement, I didn't, I, I found not super um, early. I think for me, it was, um, I believe it was like December 2018. And my introduction to DeFi was opening a maker CDP, which I think a lot of people probably have the same in minting die. Um, and that was the first time when I was like, wow, this is just like so cool and like so amazing and so different than anything that exists. Like, I know this will be big. Um, I had been in crypto since like late 2016, but that was when I got into DeFi. And, and why are you passionate about DeFi? Um, yeah, well, I would say I'm passionate about blockchain because I think that it offers us a new tool to basically reconstruct um, our social uh, relationships and mechanisms that we have to coordinate. So like I, I I'm a, a lot of like my introduction to, to this thinking was through like Nick Sabo and his writing on like social scalability. And this idea is like blockchains lower the amount of the amount of um, the cost of trust. Blockchains make it easy, like lower the cost of trust, which then enables more sophisticated um, social relationships to map on top of blockchain technologies. And so I think that thesis is like very, very, very interesting to me. And um, and so that's why I'm in, into uh, blockchain technologies. And I think DeFi is um, a really important part of that just because, it's, you know, so much of our lives are touch financial aspects. Absolutely. So prior to, to blockchain being a thing, were you in the finance space? Were you in the psychology space, <laughs> human development? Um, yeah, yeah. No, I was in, um, I would say, uh, fintech, financial technology okay. and uh, kind of like entrepreneurship. So my professional background is I started a fintech company in 2011, um, not blockchain, but just um, just normal uh, fiat stuff, and uh, and was uh, ran that until 2017. Uh, and we sold it in 2017, and then I left in 2018. So that's kind of my my background. Okay. Well, congratulations. The space is excited to have you. What what are you currently working on? Uh, I'm currently working on a, a DeFi application uh, called Pool Together, and Pool Together is a um, prize savings account built on Ethereum. A prize savings account built on Ethereum. Help, help pull that apart <laughs> a bit. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't want, <laughs> want to go too long there, but okay, so, so prize savings is an idea that's been around for like 400 years, at least, according to the research I've done. And it's basically this idea where it's you, a prize savings account is a savings account. Like you have it at a bank, you put your money in it and your money sits there and it's safe. Um, but instead of earning like one or 2% interest, like you do at a bank, you don't earn any interest And it. And instead of earning interest, you have a chance to win um, prizes and the prizes are made up of the interest that accrues on everyone's deposits. So what that means is the prizes are, are, are very large, right? So um, one of the largest price saving programs in the world is in um, the UK and it's called, they call it premium bonds, but it's the, it's the exact same concept. And so for example, in 2019 in the UK, they had a hundred billion dollars in premium bonds. Um, and that generated $1.3 billion in prizes. So of, and, and there's uh, 20 million um, unique account holders of those premium bonds. So basically, if you own a premium bond, you always get your money back, but you don't, you don't have to, um, but you don't earn any interest. But every month you have a chance to win all these prizes that are distributed from the 1.3 billion that they generate in interest over the course of a year. And your chances of winning is based on the amount of holdings in that account? Yeah, yeah. So it's proportional to like how much you've put in. So if you put in one, $1, you know, you'll have a you know, a one in a million chance. If there's like, if there's a million dollars in all the accounts and you put in one dollar, you have a one in a million chance. And how do winners get selected in the premium bond market? Uh, so they have this thing called earning. They've like personified it. And uh, that's like their random number generator. 
and um, Ernie generates the random numbers and each uh, premium bond is associated with a number. And if you hold one of the ones that wins or that, that, that number matches with, then you, you, you do it. And so and we're kind of doing the same thing on Ethereum in terms of how we select the winner. It's a random number generator, um, but obviously it's a slightly different technology, but the same, the same concept. And why is this an important function? Yeah, well, I think that price savings were created to, um, to help people save. And um, savings are very important because, uh, you know, they're, they're a prerequisite to any form of financial mobility, right? And financial mobility is really important because that's a prerequisite to a healthy society. And like what I mean by financial mobility is that people in a society have the opportunity to rise and lower in like their income. <laughs> and um, you cannot rise in your income if you don't have access to, um, to assets and you, don't have, and you can't get access to assets if you don't have any cash, right? So you basically have to have savings. So price, what price savings does is it helps make the value proposition of savings much more um, appealing, which leads to more people saving more money. And that's been um, empirically proven in a lot of the research that's been done on price savings products. And specifically, it's been proven that people who uh, play lotteries will um, forego purchasing lottery tickets and instead use price savings accounts, which are obviously like a much better value proposition for people. Interesting. Yeah, when I was doing the research, I was, uh, I saw the word lottery and a lot of the, the materials and by somehow in your description of it, just in this conversation, it lands uh, le less gamified, more incentivizing good financial hygiene. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so pool, like prize savings and no loss lotteries are used interchangeably to describe the same product. And it really kind of depends on like what market you're talking to and like what people are familiar with. But um, yeah, fundamentally what you're doing is you're, is you're wrapping a game mechanic um, around a healthy behavior. And usually game mechanics are wrapped around unhealthy behaviors, right? Like we have, we're all incentivized to like check Instagram and we're incentivized to like eat bad food and like do all this stuff, but we're not normally like, it's a psychological hack to get you to do a good thing, not a bad thing. And usually the psychological hacks are exploited, not, not leveraged to do good. Right. Right. So who is the target user of pool together? Well, our ideal target user is going to be someone who, um, who has very little, little or no savings. Um, but is currently spending money on like lottery tickets or other consumptive, consumptive activities that aren't um, like uh, positive value for them, right? So that would be like our ideal. Like that's who we ultimately want to be reaching. We want to be getting people who um, don't have savings and getting them to start saving. And we want to be getting people who have a little bit of savings and encouraging them to save more. Um, obviously, like today with where we're at blockchain, like our actual users are people who are enthusiastic about DeFi and cryptocurrency. And, and, and that's like the reality of today, but yeah. our ideal user is what I just described. Okay. And uh, so how long has pulled together been um, distributing rewards? Um, since it hasn't been that long. So it's probably since September of 2019. So less than, less than 12 months. Okay. And what surprised you about the program, the process, the users so far? Hmm. What surprised me? Um, I've probably been surprised. We've had, we've had some people put a lot of money in <laughs> like over a hundred thousand dollars, which was somewhat surprising to me like that. Um, you know, intuitively you think it would be probably people put, put small amounts of money in and people definitely do put small amounts of money in, but yeah. I have been surprised at how it has appeal kind of across the board. Um, yeah, I think that would be something for sure. Um, I mean, just for a sense of like scale, like since September, we've awarded their pool, not we, but the protocol has awarded uh, $21,000 in prizes. And obviously no one who's saved their money has lost any money. And so basically it's like, if you, if you put your money in, you have a chance to win and you have nothing to lose. So if pool together is successful, kind of future trip in a bit in five years from now, what's going to be the impact? Well, I mean, hopefully the impact is that a lot more people have more financial security and have more ability to use their savings as a stepping stone to get into other um, financial assets, right? So, um, you know, going back to like the mission in the heart, like pool together started because 
we were basically looking and being like, how can we help people achieve financial health? And the thing is, you can't help people achieve that until they have like money to start saving with. And so like mm -hmm. savings is kind of the first step to financial freedom, financial health. And so I guess in five years, our hope would be that there'd be a lot more people who feel who, who aren't as worried about money and who have a better shot at in, increasing their financial standing because they're practicing better financial behaviors. Do you and the team have ideas for additional, um, what do you call it? No loss lottery type protocols to augment or add to the pool together experience? Uh, I mean, yes and no. Like we, we definitely are working to improve the like usability and like the features of, of, um, of, of pool together. So yes. So like, yes, we have a lot, of, we have a lot of features in mind. We do want to stick to like this, the basic principle of like deposit your money for a chance to win, um, withdraw your money, like no loss, like mm -hmm. that basic principle of like savings. Like there's all sorts of like things we could go like, you know, for example, the Archery's project, I know you interviewed them. Like that's an interesting thing where like you deposit your money, you can take out whenever you want, but the interest goes to planting trees. And that's like an awesome project. But we're really focused on like this, like savings, savings, um, you know, pri prize savings use case. Yeah. So zooming out of pool together a bit, what, what's keeping you up at night, uh, proverbially speaking about the DeFi movement? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think, eh, I mean, there's nothing to, there's nothing keeping me too much to, too up at night. I think about the DeFi movement, you know, there's other things keeping me up at night, but um, you know, I think when I do look at it, like the whole DeFi movement, I think my, it's not really a concern, but uh, there certainly is a question of like, okay, five years from now, like which of these technologies are going to still be around? Um, like I know DeFi will still be around in five years, but like which of these platforms, which of these um, things that we're, we're using and the technology choices we're making, like are, are going to stay for the long term. And I think that's, you know, anytime you're dealing with an early ecosystem that's developing, you have to spend a lot of time thinking about what you're building on because you want to be building something that lasts and not that kind of goes, goes um, by the wayside. And what are some other protocols or platforms that you're currently pretty excited about or intrigued by within mm. the DeFi space? Within the DeFi space, I mean, um, there's, a, there's a lot. I think, um, well, I do love the RDI stuff. Like, so RDI, like I said, it's just a platform to redirect interest. So it's mostly towards like philanthropic causes. I think that's like a really cool product and use case. Um, um, obviously, like compound finance, which is what, pool together uses to generate interest that's that's like a really cool thing um i um think that some of these new uh like stable coin to stable coin like protocols for swapping are really cool like balancer just launched their balancer labs is, is really cool um so yeah that's some of the cool stuff there's i mean there's there's the thing is there's like there's new stuff every day right. um it's it's really really fun place to be working in and so you you mentioned this a bit earlier but um to, to get to the place where all these tools have impact at scale, they need to be considering humans that aren't currently in the space. This isn't just for the tech forward, the yeah. blockchain nerds. What are, what are some things that um, you think that the blockchain space could benefit from doing to attract new users, to attract, you know, my less tech savvy brother and cousins yeah, yeah. and so on and so forth? Yeah, well, I think I think the value propositions are there, right? So I think like the, we do have product market fit, but it's more just like what needs to get better is the onboarding, and the onboarding really boils down to two things: like your wallet, like how do you create your wallet and manage your wallet, and do you have like a simple way to do that, and how do you convert your money from your national currency to a digital currency and back? You know, so how do you take U.S. dollars and go into digital U.S. dollars, and how do you take it back out? And so I think those two, those two things, the wallets and the conversion are the two things that need to um, get really, really easy. And, but once that's done, I, you know, the products that, you know, I'm a little biased, but like pool together is, is clearly like much better than, um, than uh, like premium bonds. 
like in terms of like the efficiency of the platform and like you know, the usability and the being able to do it 24 hours seven, like all these things, like from a user perspective. So I guess what I'm saying is like from a user perspective, the stuff on DeFi is already much better than the alternatives. But what's not better is like getting in and out of it and getting started with it. And so the wallets and the fiat conversion are the two things. And, and then obviously I guess the other thing is like the security, right? And that's kind of table stakes. So that's why I don't really mention it. Like, it's it's kind of a given but like you have to have the same level of trust in a DeFi platform that you're using that you do with um with your bank right so i found pulled together through my status wallet and cool. i'm i'm not too tech forward i like to play in the space but what i really loved about the status wall is the integration with dapps yeah the kind of dapp store um and it's just made yep. the the interfacing with the incredible protocols that folks like yourself yep. are developing. So what makes status and dApps a good distribution channel for pool together and other yeah. DeFi services? Well, I think, um, I think what status has done really well is like, is, is taken. So we're basically, everyone's familiar with the app store, right? Like everyone's right. familiar with like the, the, I, I get my iPhone and then like the first thing I do is I like go to the app store. Or I get my Android and the first thing I do is I go to the app store. And so I think St status has done a really good job of like taking that same mental construct and like mapping it on to, to blockchain with like download the status app and then go to the dApp store and then you can view these dApps. So I do really like that. Um, I also think the other thing is the, um, the, the, the surfacing, the user, the user generated feedback to surface, like the most popular where people can vote on mm -hmm. their, um, on their dApps that they like the most because that's that's like you know a big problem is there are a lot of um there's a lot like finding the best things are, are a big problem right and so i think status solves that problem as well so for those who are interested in learning more about DeFi, where do you think they should get started and then for folks who want to learn more about pool together and yourself Oh man. Well, okay. So pool together, you can just go to our website, pooltogether.com. Even if you don't have crypto or have a wallet, you can still go there. You can read this stuff. So that's, that's easy. DeFi is hard because there's so many different places to go. Um, I mean, if you want to get, just get started, you obviously can, can download status from the app store and, and use that and then go to the, the, the DAP store within status and start and start doing it. That's, that's how you could get started. Practically speaking, Educational content, oh man, I don't have I don't have a recommendation right off the top of my head of like the the place for a beginner to go. There definitely is a lot of places, but I I struggle with like which one is the the one. Okay, to be honest, that's quite all right. Well, we'll, we'll flip to a more frivolous topic, which is uh, how are you going to celebrate the halving? <laughs> that's a good question. I haven't thought. Well, about respecting that very much. sheltering in place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know I'm not as huge of a Bitcoin person. Obviously, I'm into crypto, so I I'm there. But um, I haven't thought about it much. Maybe I will. I don't know. Maybe I'll like drink half a beer, <laughs> <laughs> and then like save the other half for uh, six years from now or whenever whenever the next happening is. All right, <laughs> a little artifact. Um, Layton, really appreciate your time today. Any last words, calls to action, suggestions before we let you get back to your work? No, I mean, I think I think the thing you know, I mentioned the security. The thing I always like to say when I'm potentially talking to people who don't have a lot of experience in crypto is like security is a big deal and there are a lot of risks with using DeFi that are um, because it's a new technology. And so just like, make sure you're aware of those risks, like for pool together specifically, we have like a really good blog post that is called the risk of using pool together as well as in our FAQ, et cetera. But, you know, read through that stuff before you make decisions about what you're, what you're doing. So just definitely encourage people to do their due diligence. Um, but with that said, there's a lot of really exciting and fun stuff to, to try out.